Something very extraordinary has happened over the past 10 years, and that is that the lifespan of our average everyday electronics has increased dramatically. Everything from phones to desktops to laptops. Now this isn't something that you might be aware of every single day, but take this 12 year old MacBook Pro. It came out in 2010 and honestly, it doesn't look that old today. But what about back in 2010? What did a 12 year old Apple laptop look like when this was brand new? It looked like this. That really says a lot about what has changed fundamentally in the world of computers. So today we're gonna talk about why a 12 year old MacBook such as this can still be usable and how you can make it really, really amazing for less than $100. So if you're excited, make sure to leave a like down below, get subscribed and let's get started. Today's video is sponsored by Blinkist, an innovative app that lets you digest powerful ideas and motifs from books and podcasts. With a wide selection of nonfiction books on offer, Blinkist creates 15 minute blinks to discuss key takeaways. From provocative titles like Trevor Noah's Born a Crime and Malcolm Gladwell's Talking to Strangers, to practical books like James Clear's best-selling Atomic Habits, which offers a proven framework for reinforcing positive habits, Blinkist lets you broaden your experiences. I particularly enjoyed the blink on The Road to Unfreedom, which dives into the political culture of the past few years and offers insights into Russian expansionism and its influence on Brexit and the Trump years. But what I really liked about this particular blink was the way that it broke things down in a logical and straightforward way. It wasn't just a summary, it was really giving key insights and discussing the takeaways that the author intends. Right now, Blinkist has a special offer for you guys. If you use the link in the description below, you can get started with a seven day free trial as well as 25% off a premium membership. So definitely check that out. And now let's get back to the video. So this is a 15 inch mid 2010 MacBook Pro and it's one of the most popular types, the unibody MacBook Pro. These things were outrageously successful and they basically built the foundation on which the MacBook rests today, 12 years later. This design is 14 years old, but it really doesn't look it. But that of course is just part of it because what really matters is what's on the inside of these things. If you go back in time to 1998, that PowerBook G3 that I showed you earlier, that thing came out during a time when the computer industry was undergoing absolutely insane year over year growth. Back then it was not uncommon for a high end computer to be completely obsolete within four years. I mean, just look at the Apple lineup from 1998 and from 2002, it's radically different. But as the 2000s wore on and we got to the 2010s here, something very important started to happen. And that is that year over year growth started to slow. This MacBook, for example, was the first to feature Core i5 and Core i7 branded processors. And while they weren't, you know, insanely more powerful than the Core 2 duos they replaced, this was definitely the start of Intel's complacency era. This is when Intel was absolutely on top of their game and they basically didn't have a ton of competition. So from around this time to maybe like 2017 with the rise of Ryzen, there weren't a ton of year over year changes. And some might see that as a bad thing. Certainly if you are for technological advancement, you might be disappointed by that. However, a side effect of that, or perhaps it was intentional, who's to say, is that these old devices aren't really that slow. Now, obviously I'm not saying that this thing is fast. Compare this to an M1 Max and it's not even close. I mean, look at Cinebench R23. It's, it, it's laughable, really. But the other key thing that has changed that allows a computer as comparatively slow as this to still be good is that the very fundamental things that we all do, browse an operating system, go on the internet, send emails, message our friends, those things frankly aren't very demanding. So even though this has a 12 year old dual core i7, 
those tasks don't really require all that much of it. And so the operating system and the basic tasks that you would wanna do in it run perfectly well. But that being said, there are some things that you can do with an old MacBook such as this to make it a lot more modern and a lot more usable. And the way I think to go through these is probably from the most impactful down to the least impactful. And of course, where better to start than with an SSD? These MacBooks by default shipped with 5,400 RPM hard drives. And even in 2010 when this was new, that was already clearly the end of an era. By 2012, just two years later, Apple was already moving to an all flash architecture. But which SSD should you choose? Because let's face it, this is not an expensive machine. It's probably worth less than $200. So you don't wanna dump a whole bunch of money into something this old. Not to mention the fact that this can only run SATA 2 hard drives. So there's no point putting a super fast modern SSD when you're not even gonna get the most out of it. Now, if you happen to live near a micro center, definitely take advantage of a coupon that has been going around for months now that allows you to get a free 256 gigabyte SSD if you sign up. Now, of course, if you don't live near a micro center, I will link some cheap SSDs that are gonna be more than good enough for a machine like this in the description below. The benefits of an SSD speak for themselves, so we don't really need to go into any more detail on that. But what we do need to go into some detail on is the RAM. This device, even though it's 12 years old, has a dual core i7, can actually run up to 16 gigabytes of DDR3. But again, one thing to really keep in mind is that when you're talking about upgrading a machine as old as this, you don't wanna spend that much money. So 16 gigabytes of DDR3 sodium memory can actually be more expensive than you might think. So I think the sweet spot is actually going with eight gigabytes of memory. I mean, if it's good enough for Apple to still be shipping in Macs all over the place today, then it's probably good enough for one that's 12 years old. And now at this point, there will almost certainly be some comments down below saying, Luke, Luke, you gotta upgrade the thermal paste. That's the next thing that you wanna do. The thermal paste that is included in these is designed not to be the coolest running, but the longest lasting. And so that means you don't have to reapply it every couple of years as is sometimes recommended if you use custom thermal paste. So the next two upgrades that I would recommend are not necessarily ones that are super popular, but that I think are gonna be more noticeable than a repaste. This MacBook is 12 years old, and as such, it comes with a 12 year old wireless card. And that can cause some issues because we've got Bluetooth 2.1 EDR on here. We also have Wi-Fi 802.11 BGN. It's fairly limited. And by default, this thing only comes with two antenna bands. So it's not that good on the fringes of your Wi-Fi network. So what I would recommend doing is upgrading the wireless card. It's honestly a pretty simple job. All you have to do is open up the bottom of the machine and in the top left corner is the antenna. Unplug that from the logic board and disconnect all of the antenna connections that come out of the display and you can swap that card out. Now there are a couple of different options for this and things that you have to keep in mind. Number one, you may have noticed that there were four antenna connections on this MacBook and that's because I already had a 2011 Wi-Fi card installed in here. The 2010 only has three connections. Now upgrading from a 2010 wireless card to 2011 or 2012 makes a big difference because it has more antenna bands, which means better reception towards the fringes of your Wi-Fi network, as well as being faster and more stable. But one thing that you may have caught there is if you do upgrade the 2010 to a 2011, the screen is gonna have to change because it's, it's physically different in which antennas are there. And that brings us on to the next and most fun upgrade. If you're gonna already be changing the screen to access the higher speeds of a newer Wi-Fi card, you might as well improve it. Because let's be honest, the displays on these old unibodies are not the best. 1440 by 900 on a 15.4 inch display is definitely looking a little chunky and it's especially noticeable with text. It's not ideal, but fortunately, the 15 inch MacBook Pro has this relatively unknown upgrade that we can take advantage of. And this is it. 
Yeah, this is the anti-glare display. Right now, a lot of people who know their MacBooks are gonna be going, oh, of course. And a lot of people are gonna be going, huh? Yeah, back before the Retinas came out, you could option for $100 this display panel, which features both a higher resolution and a matte anti-glare coating, as well as these silver bezels. It's definitely an interesting look. It's not something that you see very often, and you can actually buy these things for not a lot of money. This one was extremely cheap. And crucially, it's from a 2011, which means it has the connections we need for this airport card. So let's go ahead and give this machine a pretty nice upgrade. Upgrading a display is very easy. All you have to do is take off the bottom cover and then on the left side, unplug the display and remove a bracket that holds the cable in place. Then disconnect the antenna and camera from the motherboard and then disconnect the antenna cables from the airport card itself, which you can remove from the case with two Phillips head screws. After that, we can remove the display. Two T6 screws can come out from either side, leaving one in place so that we can stand the machine up on its side, open the display 90 degrees, and then remove the remaining two screws to facilitate removing the display. Now, with the new piece, just follow the steps in reverse. And finally, with everything reassembled, the display that I ordered had some stickers and residue, so we'll give it a nice cleaning. And now our rejuvenated MacBook is ready to go. In my opinion, if I had to rank the upgrades that we've done today, I would put SSD first and then this display second. It's that good. It makes a huge difference. Just going from 1440 by 900 up to 1650 by 1050 makes a big difference in how sharp text looks and how good the disc screen looks. The pixel density is noticeably better. The colors are vibrant and beautiful. And I gotta be honest, I dig the silver bezels. Let me know in the comments below if you agree. Do you think they look cool or silly? Now, if we add up everything that we've done here today, 30 bucks for an SSD, $31 for RAM, $10 for a Wi-Fi card, and $30 for the display, then we get $101. Technically, I failed, but uh, the Micro Center coupon gives us the SSD for free, so that brings it down to $71, and that's a pass. So for around $100, you can do a lot to make the experience using an old MacBook such as this much better. Whether that's upgrading one that you already have or buying one for cheap or rescuing one from a recycling center or that a friend was gonna throw away, there's a lot of ways to get these old MacBooks and this kind of upgrade makes it all worth it. It really shows how far technology has come, that 10 years ago you wouldn't have dreamed of using a 12-year-old laptop, but now it does pretty much anything that you would want a cheap sub $200 laptop to do, and it does it remarkably well. So let me know in the comments below if you think that this is a good idea. Is a 12-year-old MacBook just as usable today as a much newer one? Let me know down below. Also, if you want to support me directly, feel free to check out my new merch shop. You can see I'm, I'm repping the LM branded button down here. So definitely check that out down below. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going and more on the way. So with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video.